Hello everyone and welcome to this week's webinar. My name is Sarah and I will be a moderator along with Naaman and our presenter today will be Volker and we will be talking about working with line types in AutoCAD 2016. I also wanted to say happy early Valentine's Day and I hope everyone's Thursday is going really well. Again, my name is Sarah and I am a technical specialist along with Volker out in our Lake Oswego office and we also have Naaman who is our Autodesk expert elite. Just to go over some in-house stuff, we have some really good webinars coming up in the future. Uh, our next week webinar is going to be Introduction to AutoCAD Architecture. And all of our past webinars have been recorded and can be found at our YouTube page. And you can also download our data sets, so that includes our PowerPoints, our scripts, and our sample drawings at our Box account. And all of this information can also be found in the automated email that is sent to you. And it gives you all the downloadable links, and we can also send those to you if need be. Let's move over to our next slide. And before we get started, feel free again to leave questions in the chat window. Um, we'll try to get to all of your questions within the webinar time. If we don't, please feel free to contact us with any remaining questions that we don't get to answer. Um, this session will be recorded and we will be posting this to our YouTube page and links will be made available. Let's move over to our next slide, which is talking about our Autodesk Knowledge Network. This is a great resource for all of our featured articles, any updates within AutoCAD. Um, I can't stress enough how um, amazing this site is, so I would take full advantage of our knowledge.autodesk.com um, site. And then let's move over to our agenda. So today, Volker is going to be going over line types, um, how to change display through scaling, um, taking a deeper look at the complexity of line types, and how we can customize our line types. Um, I want to see, Volker, do you want to add anything before I change it over, transfer it over to you? No, go ahead. I'll, I'll go ahead and just ramble on while we're changing <laughs> views. Hi, everybody. Um, um, yep. Go ahead, Sarah. OK, I will go ahead and change that over. Ah, great. OK, so hi, everybody. My name is Volker, as uh, Sarah mentioned, and I will be your presenter today. A um, little bit of a background about myself here. I have been working with AutoCAD products Autodesk products, AutoCAD in particular, since 1991, and uh, worked for several resellers and have worked for Autodesk for the last four years. Uh, my dream job come true. So awesome place to work. And now here I am, happy to be passing along, hopefully, uh, some good knowledge for everybody out there. I'd like to start off, though, uh, prior to the demo with three of our default polls. Uh, we just need to kind of gauge who's out there. And uh, if you've been here to these webinars before, have you, have you attended one of these before? And so I will go ahead and trying to select my poll here. And our go to webinar seems to be freezing up on me. Why, I don't know. Sarah, can you hear me? Yes. I, let me see what we can do here. Yeah, can you go ahead and take control back and run the polls real quick? Um, that way we don't I leave... Actually... You are presenting right now, so I don't have. Yeah. All right. Well, let me talk a little bit while my um, while this thing here unfreezes a bit. Okay. So we're going to talk about line types, and uh, 
probably everybody here uses them. If you're working with AutoCAD, yes. Uh, even if you're just drawing a line with no uh, uh, particular features, that's a line type. AutoCAD comes with one specific line type. That is continuous. It's going to be in every single drawing. We can't um, uh, rename that line type. We can't delete it. It is the backbone of all other line types. So what are line types? All they are is a visual property which is assigned to our geometric objects. There we go, well, I can see your screen now. Awesome, sorry about that people. Anyway, line types, they can be patterns of dashes, dots. Uh, you've seen these in, in, in the drawings. Uh, they can be text, they can be symbols, un, unbroken or continuous uh, line types. Uh, and additional line types can be loaded or created by the user and then load it into the drawing. So line types don't exist in the drawing to begin with. They're all defined in a text file and then loaded into the AutoCAD drawing. All right, so briefly, uh, we'll try this again here with our polls. And this first poll here is, have you attended or is this your first AutoCAD webinar? And it looks like we've got uh, the majority so far who have attended before, uh, around 85% or so, and the remainder are new attendees. So we welcome uh, all those return viewers. And uh, for those attending for the first time, we hope to make this worth your while. We're really happy to have you here. So I'm just showing those results real quick like. Okay, so quick, that's all relative, right? Anyway, let's take a look at our next poll. We'd like to know which AutoCAD application you're using. Uh, so we tend to get a variety of end users here, anything from AutoCAD to AutoCAD LT. Some of the verticals like AutoCAD architecture, civil 3D and, and even other software, which I'm not sure what that would be at this point. Um, the point is, these webinars are tailored for AutoCAD LT and AutoCAD, and anything that is done in those applications can be done in the vertical applications as well, for the most part. Some things may not work in AutoCAD LT uh, just because that functionality has not been built into AutoCAD LT. It is the um, younger sibling of AutoCAD. There are those poll results. Um, quite a mix again, pretty much standard, I think, but uh, that's a good one. So let's just take one more poll here and we will start taking a look at line types. So in this poll, just kind of curious how long you've been using AutoCAD. So many of you have used AutoCAD for more than 10 years, which is um, which is very interesting and good to have you all on board. Let's go ahead and close that one and just let you see those results. So 10% less than one year, 16% between one and five, 13% between five and 10, and 61% more than 10 years. I'm not even going to ask how long. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and hide that poll, and let's take a look at uh, working with line types. All right, so um, I have a, uh, well, it's pretty much a start from scratch drawing. I've added a few layers to it using, um, uh, and I use the AutoCAD ACAD.DWT template file. In LT, of course, that would be ACAD LT.DWT. And uh, I have added a few layers here just so we can make things look a little different. Going into the layer manager, you'll see that we have our column here for line weights and line types. 
And I do have some line types assigned here. I didn't really want to do that. I was trying to speed things up. We're just going to go start from scratch real quick. And let's take a look at that layer manager again, which is the default. So all we have when we start a new drawing is the continuous line type. And if we select here to add more line types into the drawing, um, we can't do that because nothing else is listed. And so we need to load line types. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this dialog for a moment. I'm going to go ahead and draw our continuous line. And I'm just going to draw that at about eight units in length and zoom in on that puppy a little bit. And again, I'll go into the layer properties dialog. Select continuous because I want to assign a new line type uh, to this particular um, drawing. And what I need to do is select the load button. Now the load button, and depending on whether you're running into imperial units or metric, is going to bring up one of two files, ACAD line or ACAD ISO, depending on uh, what uh, measurement units you're using or what type of uh, template you started with. The ACAD ISO line is uh, populated with metric line type definitions. And you also have those in the ACAD LIN file. And as you can see, we have numerous line types to choose from. We'll talk more about the definitions when we uh, go to create our own line type. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and select a couple of line types to add to this drawing. In this case, I'm going to choose center and I'll use hidden. Now I can select more than one by using the control key or by using the shift key uh, as I pick, just like I can in most Windows applications. And I'm going to click OK. Now at this time, after loading the line type, I've not assigned it to any particular layer. Okay, uh, it's still it's in the drawing, but it hasn't been assigned. So in this case. In order to assign it, I do need to select it and then click OK. And now that center line is part of this, uh, it has been applied to the um, object properties of the line itself. So switching back to my first drawing here that I was in, I'm going to go ahead and go to my layer drop down list and choose center line. And because that line is applied to the layer, once I draw the line, the line picks up the properties of the line type as well. So this is about eight units long right here. And I've done the same with uh, creating a layer for um, uh, my hidden line work. Uh, and I usually use different colors, so typically we'll see center as yellow, uh, but later on we'll be switching to a layout, so I, I want everybody to be able to see the line types uh, a little bit clearer. So um, some off-the-wall colors here is what I'm saying. I'm going to go ahead and create another line, and we'll make it about the same length. And so we have our hidden line type. Now in this case here, uh, these being assigned to a layer, I could also easily change these by selecting them and either changing the layer that they're on. So I could make that hidden layer, and of course it's gonna be hidden. Or if I sele select the line type and I want to overwrite it, I can just go ahead and change the line type here in the properties palette to say center. And of course, it still keeps the properties of the, the color properties that were assigned to the layer, but the line type has been updated. I'm going to go ahead and undo that step. And move this down just a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and place a dimension on here. And there, there's a point for uh, me doing that. 
needs a linear dimension. And we'll just go ahead and make this one unit measurement. And there is a reason for this. Line types are drawn uh, or defined at a particular length, usually about one and a half units in length in the text file that they're defined in. And so depending on the scale of our drawing, line types may not appear as, a, as expected. If I were to draw a line down here, a hidden line, one unit long, it still appears as a hidden line. But if I change this to center and repeat the line command, and we draw this one unit long, Well, it really doesn't look like a center line. Uh, aside from the color, maybe, I can't tell that it is a center line. And there are times where you have to have line work in tight spaces. Okay, well, everything um, that has to do with line types, how they're displayed, has to do with the line type scale that the drawing is set at. Uh, we also have the annotative scale, but uh, line type scaling allows me to change how the line types appear in the drawing. So these, this is command line only. I'm going to type line type scale here. And you'll see, hopefully you can see that down here, the default value is one. So one unit equals one inch or whatever uh, type of units you have uh, assigned to the drawing. I'm going to go ahead and change this to a scale factor of point Five. Having given it the uh, half, half the LT scale of the default, this line now appears pretty much as expected. These here have also changed in the size of the lines, the dashes, as well as the gaps. And maybe I don't really want that. Maybe I just want this line here to stick out. Okay, I, I just need to adjust it, not the global LT scale. So changing LT scale back right now, I'm gonna go ahead and change it back to one. We actually have several different system variables that affect line types. One of those is the LT scale or the line type scale. This is a global scale. Then we have what's called the CELT scale and it is C-E-L-T-S-C-A-L-E, -E, and it uh, stands for Current Entity Line Type Scale. So basically, if I select this line here and go to the Property Palette, what I can do is change just the individual scale for that line type. I'm gonna go ahead and change it to 0.5. Oops, try that again. There we go, 0.5. And now I've been able to, say if this was squeezed into a compact place, I've been able to adjust it for uh, that particular object. Now, one thing to be careful about is this is an override, okay? Because nothing is selected right now, if I were to change the value of the self scale, or I could type it in at the command line, say I change it to 0.5, and now I draw a center line. You'll see that any new objects pick up that particular individual line type scale. And even if I change the LT scale, so let's go ahead and change it to two. Okay, obviously this one here isn't gonna look proper because it's in a small, uh, smaller length. But these here, both these line types, all these line types here have changed to accommodate the new line type scale and um, the dashes have expanded as well as the gaps. Okay, so the, li the line type that has the self scale assigned to it is still half 
the scale of the LT scale that is in place. All right, it's always going to be half because that's what I've got it set to, but um, uh, obviously you can set it to whatever you need it to be. I'm going to go ahead and change that back uh, to uh, LT scale of one. And I'll type SELT scale and change that to a value of one so that any new lines I drive a draw are going to reflect the current line type scale. We have one other uh, line type scale right now that I want to talk about as well. It's MS scale, MSLT scale. Oops, MSLT scale. I do know how to type. And it is also set to a one. This actually only has one or zero as a setting. And what it's for is annotation. Uh, the annotative scaling we have in AutoCAD. By default, it is set to one. And what that means is that when I create a viewport in paper space, the line type will scale itself according to the viewport scale factor. So if I have a um, viewport, say, with the scale factor of 96, eight inch equals a foot, the line type will reflect the um, reflect and um, appear as expected in that particular viewport. And we'll see how some of that works in a, in a few moments. Uh, if you turn this off, then the line type scale will not adjust to the viewport scale. So I I really don't see a reason to turn this off, but um, hey. The option is always there. Oops, almost changed it. You turn it off by typing in a val value of zero. Okay, so we've um, gone ahead and just taken a look here real quick at how these line types work with the LT scale, the SELT scale, and we've touched upon the MS LT scale or which is used for model space. All right. And by the way, uh, a lot of the, all this information as well as being able to work through this will be in the script, which is gonna be made available on our um, uh, box account uh, for which you already have a link or um, can get a link if, uh, just let us know if you don't have that. I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to a layout right now. And uh, typically I do layer things a little better. I'd have a viewport, but this was basically a start from scratch drawing. Uh, I'm just gonna resize this viewport and go ahead and change, uh, make sure that this is at a scale factor of one to one. And now I'm gonna go ahead and also copy this viewport so that we have another one to uh, compare to because what I'm going to do is change the scale factor in this viewport to be a scale of one to two. Yeah, that's what I want. So this isn't much of a change in scale factors, but it's going to be enough to Oops, wanted to keep that available there. All right, but it's gonna be enough to show you the difference here. So right now, just having brought this in, these two line types, uh, although they are the same, they do appear a bit different because of the, um, because of the way we have it um, set up for scaling here. Now, doing a regen all, you'll see that it has now updated the line types to where they are consistent across the board. This dash appears the same size as this dash right here, as well as the gaps. Okay, and this is due to a um, system variable called PS 
LT scale. So if things aren't appearing as you expect them to, uh, check your PSLT scale, make sure it's set to one, and also make sure you've regenerated the drawing. That needs to be done if you're uh, changing scale factors in the, in the uh, viewport and you want to make sure those, those line types uh, update, that everything looks the same. Keep in mind if you're plotting, uh, you're gonna regenerate anyway. But uh, if you want to see the immediate changes, you're going to have to regenerate that layout in order to see the line types update. With PSLT scale turned off, it would not make the line types appear consistent across the board. Okay, It would appear with whatever scale factor you have assigned uh, as an LT scale uh, in model space. So it could be very tiny um, or just not look as expected. All right, so let's take a look at how to create a line type and just take a look at, uh, well, basically the anatomy of a line type. All right. Um, line before type, Volker, before yes. you go on, yes. I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, can you just uh, again redefine uh, what the difference between MSLT scale and PSLT scale would be before we move on to creating the line types? Somebody yeah. had a question on that, please. Yes, yeah, certainly. So MSLT scale allows the line types to appear at whatever the annotative scale is uh, for the viewport that I, I have selected. So right here, this viewport selected over here has a scale factor of one to two. If MSLT scale were not enabled, if it were turned off, then the viewport being at one to two, the line type itself would be at a scale factor of one, one to one. So in a large drawing, if this were a scale factor of an eighth inch equals a foot, okay, scale factor 96, and the line type scale was still, or LT scale, line type scale was still set to one, we would see a continuous line, okay, if MSLT scale were turned off. But with MSLT scale turned on, the line type, instead of looking like it's set at scale factor of one, automatically uses the annotative scale to appear as expected. Okay, that's what MSLT scale does. I hope that makes sense. PSLT scale makes the line types look consistent between viewports. So we have viewports at two different scale factors here. Um, let me do it this way here. I'll go ahead and change this viewport to say one to four. We'll do a regen. Okay, so with um, having done this regen right now, the line types appear consistent like this. Okay, but maybe we don't want them to appear consistent. We just want to reflect the annotative scale. So I'll turn off um, PSLT scale. Yeah, LT scale. There we go. I'll set that to zero. And now they're more defined. Okay, so depending on the scale of the viewport, you may or may not want the lines to um, be consistent. I mean, you probably wouldn't want to have a very uh, um, high detail and have the line types appear the same as an overhead view of something. Uh, that is scaled out very far, right? But maybe you do, depending on the drawing. So PSLT scale makes them look consistent. Here, it's giving me more of a definition because of the scale factor. It's really uh, something I think you need to play with to, in order to figure out how you want things represented in the drawing. Do you want the line work to appear consistent across the board, or do you want more definition? Naman, did I make any sense at all? I 
I think you covered it. I think you got that, Poker. All right. Okay. Let's move on here then. Oops, I need to go to my model layout. So, um, line types are located, uh, they're kind of nested. Let's turn this guy here off. Let's go to my app data folder. Line types by default are found in the Autodesk folder, depending on your application, uh, under app data, roaming, uh, Autodesk. So very, very nested, right? ENU support. I mean, that's quite a lengthy path to remember. And you're going to see all your um, uh, line type files in this particular folder. So we can get to them there. You can open these up with a simple text editor. The way I like to do it when I'm working with uh, in AutoCAD, if I want to see what uh, customized line types or modify line types, um, I just use the line type manager. Okay, the line type manager, by the way, can be found right up here on the um, uh, on the properties panel of the home tab. So I'm just gonna, whoops, click on this and click on other, or I can type LT at the command prompt. So I've already got these line types loaded here. But if I click on load, again, it brings me to this dialog showing all the line types within the ACAD LIN file. If I click on file, it allows me to see these line types. What I want to do now is open that in my text editor. So I just right mouse clicked, and there's my text editor with that line type file, which is a lot easier than having to browse all the way over to uh, that particular folder. So this is uh, the line type definition file in all its glory. And uh, we have actually four sections here, okay? One is for what are called um, your standard or simple line types. These are basically consist of dashes, spaces, and dots, okay? Uh, these were the line types we had available until AutoCAD release 13, not 2013, but 13 arrived. Below that, we have another section for the ACAD ISO, all metrically scaled. And I would encourage you not to mix and match line types like this, unless you have a real reason for it. It'll screw people up uh, who are working with your drawings. Back in release 13, they introduced complex line types. And these are the ones you know we'd like to make use of uh, for a fence line, uh, tracks, batting, hot water, and so forth. So they allow us to, excuse me, uh, they allow us to not only have those dashes and dots and gaps, but to have text or even use shape files to represent a, um, features of a line type. And uh, these came around in the AutoCAD release 13, were made part of the application 14, and we have been using them joyfully ever since. Now there's a fourth section, and this is where you can add your own custom line types. And you could add them anywhere in here, okay? But I would recommend using this uh, section here for migration purposes, or even better yet, if you're gonna create line types, create a new LIN file and store all your line types in that particular file. So AutoCAD has a tool under the Express Tools. Take a look at that real quick. I'm not gonna use it, but I do wanna show you where it's at. Under the Express Tools, we have and I always type it in, so I'm not sure why I try showing in this. Um, the Make Line Type tool, there it is, M-K-L-T-Y-P-E. And this is a great tool for quickly creating a line type. I am not gonna use this. And the reason being is that those of you who use AutoCAD LT do not have this available. You don't have the Express tools. Uh, so we're gonna do it the old fashioned way, creating a line type, 
and uh, in a text editor. It's not that hard. And uh, we can always plagiarize some existing line types to create our own. Um, there, uh, I was looking through the help the other day, and if you want some more information on this make line type, uh, just type in complex line types in the AutoCAD help. And they're actually on the AKN site. There's some links in the help to the AKN site where some people have posted some really neat screencast videos showing how to work with line types, including complex line types, such as the ones we're going to uh, take a look at right now. OK, so here we have, uh, let's take a look at this. When we are working with line types, there are a few things to remember about how to define these. All, all these line types are defined using two lines of text. Okay, they all start with an asterisk. This basically tells AutoCAD that, uh, hey, we're going to have a line type here. Okay, and this is the name of the line type. This is followed by a comma and then a description. The description is optional, you don't need it. Okay, but it really helps. Okay, because uh, if you have something called FO, what, what does that mean? You know, uh, 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 SD, what would that stand for, you know? Uh, here we have just a basic graphic representation for the description. What comes after that on the second line would be the letter A, and that stands for, the, for alignment. Uh, it is necessary to have this letter A there. It is the only letter you would proceed along a line type with. This is followed by a comma. And then here we have 0.25. This is positive value. Any positive value creates the dash. This is followed by a negative 0.125, which creates the gap. If you'll see up here, dot x, all right, we have dots. These dots are created by giving it a value of zero. So positive is a dash, negative value is a gap, and then a zero would create any dots. So let's take a look a little further down the list here at one of these um, line types that are uh, of the complex family. And so for example, this fence line here, Again, it starts with the A for alignment, 0.25 is the dash, followed by 0.1 for a gap. And then we have the name of a shape, okay, that is stored in this shape file, this SHX file. And SHX are they are just like your AutoCAD Roman S, SHX files, and so forth, okay? Uh, uh, well, Roman S, Roman D, simplex, whatever. Those are the uh, same type of um, compiled files where we can, um, that have their own shapes defined within or, or uh, character sets defined within them. These shape files here contain um, symbols like this circle or a box that we tell AutoCAD we're going to use that from this particular file. The X is how that shape is placed in the line type dev definition horizontally. So you can scooch it in or scooch it out a little bit closer to one of the ga uh, dashes or a little further away from one of the dashes. There's also a Y value, which is not listed in this particular file, which allows us to move the shape up or down in the line type. The S is the size uh, of the shape, the scale of the shape. Okay, so think of it this way. If we were to use the letter F or W like in hot water here, Okay, you'll see that S equals 0.1, so it's basically the text height within that line type. We'll talk more about this U 
in a moment. So here's x, here's y, which I was referring to earlier. And this entire definition for what we want to appear within the line type is enclosed in these brackets. Okay, so you do need those to box in how the shape appears within the line type. In this case here with the hot water, um, it started off with a gap after a half inch, a half unit uh, line, and then ends with another gap, and then it repeats afterwards. So what I've included in the script as well are some line types that I've put together. And instead of retyping them all, I'm going to just copy and paste these. I could also just leave them in this LIN file, but it's uh, going to be just as fast um, to uh, copy and paste these into the um, current ACAD line. So basically, I've created a storm drain and a storm drain two line type. Uh, all of these are stor storm drains, actually, except for the flow one down here. And the only difference here is that with this storm drain, I have the letter S D appearing in the line type. We don't need to have the same text values appearing in a complex line time type for every um, instance of that text. Okay, so when the line type definition repeats itself, here it has S D two, and here it has S D. I just kind of threw that in there. I'm not sure if you'd want to do this or not, but you can is the point, okay? We'll see how that looks on paper in a moment. Taking a look at uh, these two right here, Storm Drain U and Storm Drain R. Up until AutoCAD um, released 2011, if you drew a line, a complex line type with text or whatever, if you drew it in a circle or you drew the line in the wrong direction, uh, that text would appear upside down maybe. Okay, maybe you didn't want that. You always wanted the text to be readable. In AutoCAD 2011, they introduced these um, uh, switches, I guess you could call them, U and R. And the U allows me to specify that with this line type, the text will always be readable, okay, regardless of what, um, what the rotation angle is. R makes that text be, appear relative to the line type. So it, it, it stays at a tangent with the line type. That'll be explained better when we show it. Uh, in the past, all we had was the letter A, which was an absolute rotation. So that would cause the line types to be unreadable if perhaps the line was drawn in a circular fashion and then you had upside down text all of a sudden. So we'll take a look at uh, how that appears. Finally, I've created another line type here. And what this one does, it, it uses the Unicode characters from the standard font. Now, what it's going to do is draw an arrowhead in that line type definition. One thing I want to point out before I forget again, I meant to write this in the script and I didn't, is that what you're seeing there is that we're telling AutoCAD, hey, draw length of lines and gaps such and such. Use this Unicode character from the standard style defined in the drawing. All right, well, in this case, the standard style is ba uses the font Arial, okay? And it, what, um, what happens is if somebody were to open or insert my line work into their drawing and their standard style is set to Roman S, then that symbol may look completely different. Okay, or it may not exist 
within that particular font, like a Roman S maybe or simplex. And so the line type would not appear as expected. So typically, whenever I create custom line types, I also create a custom style or a style specifically for my line types with whatever uh, Windows font or AutoCAD font uh, I want to use, but it'll have a unique name and therefore it's not going to reference the standard font of somebody else's drawing. Hope that makes sense. It just screws things up. And if we have a moment, I'll show that example. But let's uh, get these in here since we're running short on time. I'll paste them into the ACAD line file. And we'll do a quick save here. And now I'm just going to type in LT. We'll go to the load command here and you'll see that we have my um, my custom line type files at the bottom of the, the list here, some of them anyway. And I'm going to go ahead and select all of these. Whoops, not all of them. Let's do this. Just like that and I'll click OK. Yes, and we'll click OK again. I'm just going to go ahead and change to my custom layer, which really doesn't do much for me. But at this point, custom has the line type storm drain assigned to it. We'll go ahead and make a couple of copies there. maybe more than a couple. All right, so these are all that custom storm drain. Uh, we have a rather large gap, which I do want to see in this one here. And what I'm going to do is just change the properties of these other line types to show the difference between them. Um, so having done this, I'm going to go ahead and assign storm drain two. And this is the one where I was saying I have um, different verbiage as it repeats. So you can get pretty creative with that. I'm also going to go ahead and change the properties of this line type, uh, layers line type to storm drain R. And this one here to storm drain U and I needed one more copy. So we'll copy that here. And let's change this one to the flow. So this is having used that Unicode character and I was using the Arial font in my standard style. So I think this is really neat being able to um, uh, insert characters uh, embedded within the fonts character map. Um, you could even use the WYSIWYG uh, character maps that are available with Windows and um, uh, use those Unicodes. The important thing is to try and stick to fonts that are available on all Windows systems or with all installs of AutoCAD. So with Windows, there are typically about 15 fonts that are um, uh, the same worldwide on all Windows operating systems. So you'd want to stick with those, Arial, Tahoma, uh, Verdana, so forth. Now, as far as these uh, here go, with the uh, um, absolute and relative um, uh, um, switches that we've added to them, um, let's take a look at this in a di different light. Taking this normal line work here, let's go ahead and scooch those out a little way so we can keep those separated. Let's go ahead and drag them over here a little ways. There we go. Actually, we can get rid of this line work. 
I'm all I'm going to do here is rotate all three of these just so you can kind of see how those switches affect the line work. And let's just do about 25 degrees here. And you'll see that the um, uh, this is the default that we used to have in AutoCAD, that letter A for the switch. And you'll see the text is just um, kind of staying relative to um, X being X and going straight across while the line work is going at an angle. These two appear as I would expect them to. Now, if I create something like a circle using this particular storm drain line, okay, go ahead and do a circle. And let's switch this over to We'll use storm drain R. You'll see the text, how it changes here. It's readable down here. It's upside down here. It just stays within, uh, I guess it's a tangent uh, um, uh, of the circle. It'll always stay in place, but it's still going to be a little bit unreadable. So upside down and up here because of the direction it was drawn. If we change this to, excuse me, the storm drain U, and this switch here is the one we have our default complex line type set to nowadays. The text remains readable. It's not upside down here. It's not upside down here. It's going to be readable. Obviously, it kind of needs to uh, conform to the line work. We still want it to be within uh, the guidelines of the circle here. So uh, if you have any line types that are legacy from, say, before release, 13, all you have to really do is go back into the line type file and change. Let's take a look at one of these here, like this gas line. This would, uh, actually, I can't recall, but there may not even be this value in there. Uh, if there is, it would say the letter A. Just change it to a U, and that will allow you to have this type of consistency across the board. Um, in your AutoCAD drawings. You would have to reload the line types. It doesn't just update uh, when you change the text file. Okay, so you'd have to go into that load command and reload those line types. Anyway, there's a lot more to line types. Uh, this is a quick overview of how easy it is. Well, a review of working with the line types and the scale factors and how easy it is to customize and create your own line types. But, you know, there's always more to learn about this. There are certain things that affect uh, polylines. Um, there are system variables that are associated with those um, and much more. But for the most part, it's pretty easy to create your own line types. So I do encourage you to um, uh, Check out some of the help files and and on AKN some great tutorials by some very smart people uh, who ha are showing some very cool ways to work with line types. Alrighty, um, in the PowerPoint slide, um, we do have resources available to you. I will just go ahead and open up that here instead of uh, switching over, and then we can uh, actually do some Q&A real quick, Like Five, this little guy. And uh, just kind of want to show you the resources we have here. So Autodesk Help is really good uh, for answering any quick questions through Twitter or the forums. And then the uh, AKN, you're going to find lots of articles and uh, learning aids, uh, uh, including videos uh, by end users as well as us here in product support that uh, show how things work, like working with line types. This is a great tutorial here for learning the basics of AutoCAD. And I've also included some links to um, help documents, uh, which 
uh, will allow you to learn just a little bit more about creating these line types. One article that I like to always point out is an error message that we see quite common uh, often when working in product support, uh, customers calling in about this particular error message. And uh, this article will explain it all, but in a nutshell, it typically means you're missing a shape file. So, um, uh, or it could be corrupted, so. Anyway, um, real quick like, thanks for joining us. We're gonna have one more poll real quick and take some uh, questions from you. But don't forget, you can uh, email us directly if you have uh, requests, concerns, uh, or just wanna give your input. Uh, if anything for this particular webinar, please in the subject line put build your AutoCAD IQ. We have several teams that do these webinars. So one last poll and we'll take some questions. And this is primarily, hey, did you learn anything? Um, it's always nice to hear if you did. And if you didn't, you know, then we need to make changes. But um, we're pretty darn close to 100% right now, um, which is, you know, I'm not going to complain about that. Now, okay, 99%, that's still awesome. And for those who didn't learn anything new, you know, um, I, I still hope it was worth your while, or if not, you know, don't, every webinar is different. Uh, we throw different information out even if we uh, repeat the topic. And so just to uh, quickly share this information as to who uh, has learned stuff and who hasn't, uh, I'm going to present that on the screen if it updates. Yes. Awesome. Okay. All right. Let's take, uh, take some questions. Okay. Let's see. Um... Can you hide line types that we don't use on a daily basis? I have that for Dave Ron. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Um, you know, all you really need to do is go into that text file uh, and remove what you don't want. Better yet, I would create a new line type file. For example, I have this one here. Um, I just created a text file called um, whatever you want to call it, and uh, with an extension of LIN, and what you could do is just copy the ones you want from your ACAD LIN file and uh, place them in this file and use that as your um, uh, default LIN file. You know, better yet, create a template which has only the line types you want to use. But if you're worried about people grabbing a line type out of a uh, te out of the uh, or loading it into the drawing, then I'd recommend creating a new LIN file. I hope. Awesome. I hope that was the question. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Um, let's see. Let's move, let's see if we can find another one. Uh, how about this one? Is there a way to use? Nauman jumped ahead and answered that one already. Let's see. Okay, uh, we have one minute left. One okay, so minute one left. more? Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you make a line type with multi-lines from Mark? Okay, so yeah, we haven't didn't talk about multi-lines. Uh, multi-lines are uh, using the ML style editor. You can create your own line types and each multi-line object. So if you have, I think you can have up to 16 parallel lines. Each one of those can have a different line type assigned to it, as well as a different color or other property. So um, uh, just before I close up, in case you don't know what we're talking about here, the multi-line style editor um, allows me to create styles of lines that are parallel to each other and we can assign different line types per um, per parallel line. <laughs> Sorry, it took a while to 
spit that one out, didn't it? Uh, but there's our line type. Tyler, Tyler, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. It gets difficult. But, okay, I guess that will be it for us. It's 12 o'clock on the dot, Volker. Um, that was an awesome demo. Thank you. Well, thank you, and I want to thank everyone for attending. We always appreciate your attendance and hope we can do you good next week. Have a great week and a safe weekend. Thank you, guys. Have a good one.